My name is Ben Cumming. Uh, I'm the Communications Director at the Future of Life Institute. Uh, we've had the good fortune to collaborate uh, sort of a great deal over the, over the years with Foresight Institute on many wonderful projects, including world building, which I'll talk a little bit about um, here today. The title here, the subtitle, sorry, which was initially labelled on the programme, is a little bit not misleading. It does form part of it, but you know I've expanded it a little bit to uh, explore why we look at things like the AI, uh, AI for SDGs and, and beyond. So new title is problem solving, not power seeking. Um, moving on. Now a little bit about the Future of Life Institute. For those of you who don't know, Future of Life Institute was founded um, about ten years ago with a view to steering transformative technology to benefit humanity, which is a lofty ambition to be sure, but one I know that everyone in this room shares. Um, and you know, it's oh, you know, we started off as a community of global experts, which we still are, and have gradually become a policy organisation, an outreach organisation, and a grant making organisation. Now, about a month ago, we articulated on our website a new position on AI. I say new, we didn't have a bit that uh, articulated our official position on AI before, but we wanted to update it to uh, just reflect this new emphasis that we're pushing for, which is, I'll let you guys read it, I won't read it all out, but basically what it says is that AI has tremendous potential um, to resolve intractable problems. Uh, intractable problems faces humanity. However, we also recognize the enormous threats presented by uh, the race to develop artificial superintelligence and incredibly capable um, AGI systems without sufficient oversight, safety standards, or governance. And that in actual fact, we already have the capability to leverage AI in order to solve many of these problems. Um, and so let's give you forward a little bit. We must intentionally invest in developing AI to solve specific problems and achieve identifiable goals. Now, why? This is just a sort of brief snapshot of the, I guess, narrative, the public discourse um, around AI. And it presents what we consider to be often a sort of false dichotomy. Now, the media obviously doesn't love nuance in any circumstance, but you know, pitting Zoomers against Doomers among the AI uh, doomsayers, and you know it strikes at a core of the problem, which is most people, including most experts and most of the general public, recognise that uh, completely unregulated, unchecked, um, and reckless speeding to develop increasingly powerful uh, advanced AI general purpose systems comes with enormous risks. Be that uh, you know in the form of escalating harms, um, be that extreme power concentration, be that uh, mass surveillance in the hands of a handful of actors. Um, without accountability, right the way up to uh, misuse, you know, bioterrorism, um, extreme uh, labour displacement and replacement, and then of course loss of control um, and the existential threats therein. Nuclear escalation, pick, uh, pick your favourite. Um, and so, you know, and with that in mind, we recognise that in order to get anywhere safely, we have to build the institutions and mechanisms in order to safely uh, govern the development of these incredibly powerful technologies, while at the same time investing in and focusing on developing narrow systems and existing general purpose systems in order to fix specific problems. And this is just sort of a summary of like, those various articles. So here you have sort of EAP manifesto right the way down to sort of AlphaFold, which illustrates uh, the sort of, uh, problem-solving based AI solution strategy that I've outlined. Getting there. Now this is a little bit where I put my sort of comms director hat on and talk a bit about, now you've got a good idea, okay, you're talking about, okay, we need to build institutions in order to build advanced systems safely uh, for the benefit of all rather than just a handful of individuals um, or uh, organisations. Um, and you've also recognised that you need to uh, develop AI to solve specific problems, narrow AI and existing general purpose systems to solve specific problems. This is courtesy of uh, two um, thinkers, theorists on social change called Chip and Dan Heath. But basically it challenges you to envision making an idea stick in the general public. It's like try, you know, instructing someone riding on an elephant. So you must direct the rider. This involves finding bright spots. So pointing towards individuals who are already doing great work in the space and encouraging their, uh, them to follow that example. Uh, script the critical moves, so as in instruct them 
uh, on you know, specifically what they have to do. This links to here, which says shrink the change. So rather than providing lofty goals or abstract futures, instead focus on specific um, changes that they can make and practical steps that they can take. Uh, I'm going to leave this here for now because it will come up further on in the speech, and I'm anxious not to take up too much time on it um, here, but uh, yeah. We'll This is finding feelings and pointing to destinations, which are two critical steps in doing this, uh, in achieving the kind of, making the messaging that we're talking about stick. You can see here the world building contest that we've collaborated on with, with Foresight. Here is an article from uh, the director of our futures program, Amelia Jaworski, who leads on this work about how science fiction uh, can uh, help us improve AI, sorry, an interview with her about how to improve AI. Here is a uh, competition that we ran uh, with Hollywood Health and Society, uh, basically uh, a competition for screenwriters to write about positive futures with AI. And this is the Imagine a World podcast that came out of our world building contest. So this is the body of our work that really focuses on making grants and collaborations in order to build worlds, to inspire people, and you know, encourage that sense of awe that is critical in making an idea stick. It can be absolutely transformative oh. for all. Now this is, uh, just really quickly, this is an example of what we call uh, a bright spot. So this is an example of uh, someone who you know, is already doing excellent work in narrow AI in order to solve specific intractable problems facing humanity. Uh, it's a woman called uh, Kate Callow, who uh, is the CEO of a company called Amini. Um, she's the former head of emerging markets at NVIDIA. Um, and she's sort of working a lot on uh, using basically closing the data gap in Africa, in particular with regard to environmental and uh, agricultural information, and therefore enabling uh, that the region to, use its cap uh, to develop its capital more effectively. Oh, sorry, hang on, how do I get back? There we go. It can be absolutely transformative for our lives, but we have to understand that the technology development will not stop. So how do we get ahead? How did we get here? what is to come and how can we build solutions and build policies that are adapted to their countries and to their people. To ensure AI is a force for good, not a runaway risk, we need world leaders to cooperate. A multilateral approach rooted in human rights is the only way to ensure the benefits of AI are seen by all. It's time for bold new thinking. That man speaking at the end is the former UN Commissioner on Human Rights, who we have collaborated with in a partnership we built with an organization called The Elders, uh, inspiring leaders to take long view approaches to leadership when I was like, hey, that one minute. Okay. Skipping ahead. Um, okay, so this is mapping parts, directing riders, and growing people. So this is sort of illustrating that through our partnership with The Elders, which is a group of world leaders focused on exactly this, uh, a group of world leaders who are working with um, on areas such as this, like how can we combat existential risks in order to bring about futures with transformative tech that uh, empowers all. This is us out, an example of our work with religious communities to get them to imagine positive futures with artificial intelligence and engage them as stakeholders, so growing our people there, which is another key step in the uh, directing the elephant metaphor I used earlier. This is from our, uh, uh, from our Windfall Trust program, which my colleague Anna is developing which looks at how can we build solutions for a world in which wealth is entirely concentrated um, in the hands of uh, a few individuals and companies as a result of AGI. Um, and this is from the hackathon we did with Foresight, uh, which is aimed at you know, mapping paths specifically to futures such as these. Now this is some practical work we've done recently that I just wanted to highlight as an example. We just ran um, a RFP, which uh, looked at how we can A, uh, uh, the impact of AI on achieving the SDGs, and then two, uh, building global institutions to govern AI. So these are two of the things that I spoke about at the beginning. On the one hand, you know, we're looking at how can uh, narrow AI and existing general purpose systems be focused to solve existing intractable problems, um, rather than you know, uncertain capabilities of just increasingly powerful general purpose systems that carry enormous risks. Um, and then this is building institutions to govern uh, AI. And these are some of the winners. So you can just see some notes here. If you guys want to find out more about this, uh, look into it. Uh, I won't um, 
take up too much time by reading them out, but we did have over 130 entrants from over 39 countries, including some of those above. So definitely check those out. There are two things I do want to highlight very quickly before I go, just in case anyone here is interested to find me about at the end. I mentioned before about getting people to imagine scenarios with, um, with AI and the kind of uh, situations and worlds we could create. We're currently running a super intelligence illustration contest, uh, which offers prizes of uh, 10 grand a piece for people who can come up with the most creative but also informative illustrations of what super intelligence could actually look like. We have racked our brains about this for quite a long time, as I'm sure some of you have. So by all means enter that. The other is a RFP. We are currently running a $4 million um, grant scheme on concentration of power. People are invited to uh, submit their thoughts on particular mechanisms or institutions or solutions for the extreme power concentration that we are likely to witness over the next few years as a result of advanced AI. So yeah, if you want to find out about either power concentration or illustrating superintelligence contests or grants, please come and find me at the end. Thank you so much, Ben.